to the wire here. This is our next to last meeting. And we're going to focus tonight on civic engagement and neighborhoods, have uh, discussion groups as we've been doing for our last many meetings. But this is our last discussion group night. Um, the idea is to start producing the final document in, in here in the next few days, really within the next week. And by the time we meet on May 22nd, to have given you all a chance to look at that document one more time. And then so our, our, our last meeting is really going to be all about kind of hanging around the table, giving any final comments, reviews, and thoughts um, before that document goes to the printer. So that's what we're all about. I'm going to give you more details on the editing process and finishing up Vision 2037, et cetera, um, when we get to that point in the agenda. Did you want to add something, Bob? I'm going to interrupt just for a second because Tom Hankson is here and he didn't bring cupcakes. <laughs> but he did bring something else. Tom, do you want to do that now? Sure, absolutely. I brought you all an Orca card. And you get an Orca card. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> really? Oh, woo -hoo! Oh, it has a $10 value on it. And <laughs> it's rechargeable, so don't throw it away. Ooh, when nice. you run out of happy. money on this, take it to the customer service center. There's instructions on how to use it. If yeah, I will need them. I've never had them. And my exchange for you is that sometime after June 1st, if you go to our website and do our online survey, I would very much appreciate it. Oh, yeah. And thank you all for your service, and I'll put them right back on that table. Thank you. And I think we'll even, we'll even get Chris Elliott on transit this way. I, yeah. I was going to ask if there's some place we could add our comments about what the experience was like. But yeah. I bet there is. Yeah. Us, so that's yeah. Wow, it's like the Ellen Show. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the Ellen Show. That's right. That's what we're doing here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, get ready to look under your seat. <laughs> and Tom, I also wanted to add, I was very pleased, and I bet committee members were as well, to come in and see the banner about Biking Day on yes. May 19th. That was Bike. very cool. Everywhere Day. Bike Everywhere Day, yeah. So, good. In line with committee recommendations. So, where do we find out about what that means? I read the banner, but it doesn't say what it means. Where do people find out what it means, Tom? Go online. Uh, I'm sorry. Bike everywhere. What does that mean? Ask Greg. Oh, where do you get more information? It, it, it's, it used to be called Bike to Work Day. Oh, oh that's and true. And it's just a promotion to that's get true. your bicycle out of the garage and start riding it. We do have a lot of people who can move to work. But they also reminded us that they just like to ride for any of the reasons. So it's a countywide project, and you'll see stations like that throughout the county. Great. And now that the monsoons have ended, maybe people can actually get on their bikes and use them. All right. So we have Megan, Megan Pembroke, Pembroke here. Um, I bet a bunch of you probably already know her. Um, to talk about the city's communication, civic engagement, neighborhood engagement program. Um, she's going to give a 15, 20 minute presentation for, to get you all up to speed on what the city's up to. And then we have a discussion group and discussion questions after that time. So go ahead, take it away. Oh, she also has handouts, so I'm going to hand these out. So one's just a copy of my presentation in case you rather follow along that way. <clears throat> and then the other one is I took some screenshots of some of the tools I'll be talking about today. A couple of them um, you might not be familiar with because they're newer and then one of them is only accessible to city staff so I just wanted you to be able to see that. <clears throat> but I'm happy to answer questions about any of those as we go along. And I also wanted to mention that I've got Wendy McClure with me who I hope most of you have the pleasure of knowing. Um, she's responsible for a big chunk of what I'm going to talk about today so she may, I may tap her to answer questions if they're more in her area. So um, thank you for having me. This is a topic we love to talk about, um, so we're glad that you're all interested in it. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the areas that we're focusing on as a team in 2017. Uh, but before I start with that, I wanted to talk a little bit about who we are as a community, a communications. Thank you. See, she also brings me water. She's wonderful. Um, who we are as a team and kind of why we're focusing on the areas that we're focusing on. So we are the... Whoops, did I go too far? Nope. The yes, I did. Communications and Community Engagement Team. We call ourselves the ComCom Team for short. Um, and our team supports the city's mission of creating awareness about what the city does, so our operations, our services, our projects, 
and then opportunities for community members to engage with the city and with each other. So we have several goals under that kind of broader mission. One is to create kind of a basic foundation of knowledge among our community members about, again, what the city does, who we are, who our employees are, what our priorities are, what our major projects are, um, and how to get information about those things to ensure that all community members, whether they are longtime residents of the city, new to the city, whether they just work here or they're just visiting, that they know how to get information about what the city does and that they know how to provide feedback on, on what the city is working on. And then thirdly, that they know how to get involved with that if they, if they so choose. And then finally, a third goal under that is to assist city staff and city leaders in identifying concerns in the community. Um, and that's both small and large. So a concern could be um, a, a sidewalk that's in need of repair in a given neighborhood. That's a smaller concern, but we want to help identify those issues and make sure that city staff are aware of them and help them respond if we can. Then it also goes to those broader issues, which I think you've talked about some of them through your meetings already, like the Safe Streets program, um, some of the issues that we've seen around people feeling, having concerns about immigration enforcement. Those are issues that we can help our city leaders identify and then develop a plan for responding to them. So very quickly, I wanted to introduce our team. Tonight, I'm going to be talking about some of the things that we traditionally think of in terms of community engagements and neighborhood engagement. So neighborhood groups, um, we often think about public meetings. But really, all of the things that our team is working on, whether it's um, responding to a pothole complaint on Facebook, broadcasting these, these meetings that you're having, Pipa is a member of my team, um, or talking to the media about uh, bikini baristas, which I sometimes get to do. Those are all part of creating awareness about what the city does, making sure that people are aware of what we're doing, and having a chance to get involved. So very quickly, I already introduced Wendy. Uh, Wendy is in charge of the Office of Neighborhoods, which joined my team last spring when Deborah Wright retired. And she also does a lot around community engagement, which we're going to talk about tonight. Jamie Hudson is a new full-time position that we added to the Office of Neighborhoods last August. Um, and so she supports Wendy on neighborhoods work. And then she also supports our Safe Streets work around homelessness and addiction and mental illness. Um, Lexi Hanks joined our team in May. She's our website guru. She helped launch the city's new staff website and our new tourism website. And she also supports the city's main website and our tourism social media. Uh, Sarah Reyes is, helps with outreach and media. She also manages the city's primary social media accounts. And then Pipa is the newest member of our team. And she manages the Everett Channel. She joined our team in November. And she's a fantastic addition. Um, and then again, very quickly, these are some of the areas that we're responsible for broadly, communications and outreach around strategic um, outreach for major projects and initiatives. We support other departments if they have projects that they need outreach help with. We do media relations, so both proactive pitching to, neighbor, or to um, media about stories that we want covered or responding to inquiries, which is why I was late getting here today, um, for those last minute questions that they might have, coordinating interviews. Um, we manage the Everett Channel, which is the city's government access channel. Um, all of the, the city's primary websites, so the staff website, the city's main website, the tourism website. And then we also have a library and transit website, which we help support. Our city's main social media accounts and the tourism account. Um, Office of Neighborhoods, which we'll talk about. Boards and commission support. Wendy um, is the staff liaison for Council of Neighborhoods and Diversity Board. Um, departmental communication support, and then employee communications, which is something I'll talk more about tonight, is a major focus for our team this year. So this 2017 focus areas are the, the areas that our team, as we looked at where we could be most effective in supporting city council and the mayor and their goals of broadening community engagement, getting new faces involved. These are the areas that we thought we could have the most impact this year. So I'm going to go through all of them um, tonight. But I'm also happy to answer any questions about kind of more traditional um, things that, you, that you've heard about in neighborhood associations, all those kinds of things at the end of my presentation. Before I talk about these focus areas, I wanted to cover three kind of operating philosophies that our team uses, and they, and they guide kind of why we've decided to focus on these things. 
So one, one basic philosophy for us is that people need to have a basic trust in city government, a basic relationship with us before we can ask them to, to dive into a deeper, uh, more participatory role. So for instance, they need to know if they report a, a pothole to us through Facebook, that we're gonna respond to that, that we're going to deal with it effectively and, and quickly. Um, and they need to have a trust in us there before we can ask them to take on a leadership role in a neighborhood or, or join a boards and commission. They need to have a basic awareness of what the city does and a basic kind of faith in us. Um, a second philosophy is for us is that we need to go where people are. So we know that beyond those traditional methods we use, people are gathering on Facebook, they're gathering in churches, they're gathering in community centers, um, schools are a major touch point. We need to go where people are and make sure that they can get information about the city there. And then thirdly, a third philosophy for us is that our employees are key. City employees are key. Our city employees are talking with the public on a daily basis, whether that's a part of their job or they're just talking to family members or neighbors. And so they need to understand what the city's priorities are around community engagement, and they need to have the tools and resources to do that effectively. So um, major city initiatives, and I'll go over this one um, somewhat quickly because I think you've heard about these before but part of our role is supporting the city in those major um, programs that we've taken on so one of the ones that probably comes to mind is the safe streets program our team plays a major role in um, coordinating media for that in, in doing a lot of public education around that and then uh, I've also talked a little bit about some of those emerging issues like what we've kind of called inclusive communities, some of the concerns that have come out of um, immigration groups or Im uh, people in the immigrant communities in our city feeling unsafe, wanting to know how the city is going to respond to immigration laws. So some of that we do behind the scenes. Some of that is bringing um, community members together with the right city staff, whether that's the police department or um, the mayor in some cases and giving them a chance to share concerns one on one. And some of it is more proactive education and community engagement, which you've seen around safe streets. So just very quickly, um, we've done a lot of media outreach around a safe streets program, um, trying to get the media to cover some of those stories and build awareness. We've done community forums and public meetings to give our community a chance to kind of learn alongside us as we've learned about these different issues and the different potential responses to them. We do email updates for the Safe Streets program. We have about 900 subscribers to those email updates, and they've been a great tool for us to share kind of behind the scenes stories that don't always get covered by the media. We've done stakeholder groups. We have a current stakeholder group on Smith Avenue, which is a, a mo primarily business owners there who came together and said, we've got concerns, please come and talk with us. And that's been a very productive way for us to bring city staff together with them to come up with solutions for that targeted area. We are launching another um, stakeholder group in the downtown core. And then you've probably read in the paper that we're launching a third group along, along Evergreen Way near the planned supportive housing project. And we found that's been a very effective way to get people who are focused on productive solutions together, but get them face to face with the right city staff and come up with solutions that meet the needs of that specific neighborhood. Um, we've been doing a lot of videos and uh, informational materials around safe streets and you'll see some and more of those coming out. Hopefully all of you have had the chance to see the great addiction video that PIPA and Jamie put together for the most recent forum. That's on our website and that's a great way for us again to show the stories of the people that we're helping. Um, so you'll see more of that stuff coming in the coming year. Under neighborhood associations, which is another major focus area for us, we have two main priorities there. One is to support the existing neighborhood groups, and then the second is to activate dormant neighborhood groups. So we have a number of neighborhood groups that are kind of either somewhat inactive or are not active at all right now, and so that's a focus of ours, just trying to get those reactivated. And this, again, is primarily Wendy and Jamie's role. They, they've divided the neighborhoods up, divided the responsibility of the neighborhoods up so they can each really focus on um, working alongside those neighborhood leaders to build uh, stronger neighborhood groups. 
So as we've talked with our neighborhood leaders, they have a lot of the same goals that I think your group probably does and the city leadership does as well, which is to get new faces involved, to diversify the, the base of people who are getting involved with um, city government. And this group right here is a, a great example of that. Um, we've got a lot of new faces who haven't been involved in a border commission before, and that allows us to get a new perspective from our community, a broader community perspective than we might have had in the past. Um, so neighborhood groups are a great avenue for us to share information and get information from our community members about what's, what's really important to them. Um, and so that's a big focus for us. So support to neighborhood leaders, that can come in the, the form of one-on-one -on -one work with a neighborhood group, neighborhood leader or a steering committee, helping them develop a plan for reaching new people, helping them overcome a specific challenge that they've encountered. Um, and then again with those dormant neighborhoods, really I've, as we've had people step up and say, hey, I might be willing to, to get my neighborhood group going again, that's a, that's a brave step and one that we really want to support that person as they get started um, and help them be successful. So we have three neighborhood groups right now, Glacier View, Boulevard Bluffs, and Westmont Holly that are all in the process of reorganizing. So that'll be a major focus for Wendy and Jamie as those groups get underway. Um, a second area is skill buildings and what we call social practicals. So this is providing neighborhoods with neighborhood leaders with training in some areas that they've identified. So social media is a major one. They, our neighborhood leaders like us know that people are gathering on Facebook. A lot of people get all of their information through Facebook. So they want to have those skills and, and um, Wendy and Jamie have paired them with the great uh, social media team that we have at the library to do some, some practical skill building there. And then we also have larger events like the Jim Deers event we had this spring and we'll have another one this month, right? I think it's going to be in the fall. In the fall, okay. Um, with Jim Deers and that was around specifically around engaging diverse populations. So those are great ways for um, not only neighborhood leaders but the broader community to come and learn those skills. Um, we support events, so hopefully all of you have heard of the Monte Cristo event. This is an event that celebrates people who are working on, to keep their properties beautiful and maintained. Um, and so we're taking a look at some of those events that we've done in the past with an eye towards engagement. How can we get new people involved in the Monte Cristos? How can we get new sponsors that will help us broaden the participation? So we're, we're taking some of those events that we've always done and trying to expand them to new audiences. Um, the match, matching fund program, which you might have heard as, of the, as the mini grant program. So uh, we allocate $2,000 per neighborhood each year for neighborhood projects. Um, so those can be events, they can be um, cleanup projects, they can be signs. There's a lot of different things that the neighborhood groups use those for. And um, they are a matching fund program, so the neighborhood, neighborhoods have to provide um, matching funds either through in-kind donations or donation of their volunteer time. And so again, we're looking at those. Every year we find that not all of the funds are used. So this summer after um, we have allocated the requested funds, we'll be opening up those unrequested funds to the neighborhood groups again and to community groups to do more projects and hopefully um, make the most of that money that's allocated there. And again, with an eye towards projects that are really engaging and hopefully bringing in new people. And then finally, a, a major area for us under neighborhood associations is, is helping to build the online visibility and notification systems for neighborhoods. So a lot of our neighborhood groups are still relying on um, postcard mailings to let people know about their upcoming neighborhood meetings. Those are opt-in programs, so, so we know um, just by nature that there are people who are not getting, um, getting notified about neighborhood meetings. And so we'll be enhancing um, that existing notification by using our website, and which allows us to do email updates. The nice thing about that is that people can manage their own notifications, so they can go in and um, subscribe to whatever they want to be notified about, and uh, takes it away from the city or the neighborhood leaders to have to maintain that list. So in the broader area of community engagement, um, as I said, we know that neighborhoods are one important way where people are getting information, but we know that there are some people who are not involved in their neighborhood groups for a variety of different reasons. And so we want to make sure that, as I said, we are going where people already are gathered. So those are our main priorities, is to identify and connect with what we call non-geographic groups or interest-based groups. 
um, to enhance our school partnerships, that's a major touch point, and then to build uh, civic engagement and awareness opportunities. So some of the tools and projects in this area, one is just building that network. So sometimes these are informal groups. Um, we've, we've had a lot of meetings with um, immigrant groups that are more informal groups, just people who have come and expressed concerns. Those are connections we want to be making and adding to our network of information sharing. Um, some of them are group like Casino Road stakeholders or some of those other stakeholder groups that I've mentioned that have formed around common concerns or common interests. We want to make sure that we know who they are and, and we can um, be sharing information with them and vice versa. Um, and then as well, as I mentioned, the schools, we know for young families, um, attending a nighttime neighborhood meeting might be a big ask for them. But school's gonna be a touch point because their kids are in school. So we wanna make sure that we're connected to the, the school leaders and we're sharing information and, and getting information from them. Uh, we're supporting boards and commissions outreach. Um, which is really under um, Bob's area, and making sure that w as we build those networks, those networks are helping us let uh, new people know about opportunities to serve on volunteers, boards, and commissions. We recently launched a new city newsletter. Hopefully you've all seen that. There's a screenshot of it in that packet that I provided. We already have 640 subscribers, which is great. Um, this is a way for us to highlight things that might not have been covered by the media, and not all of them are even city things. Some of them are events that are, are being done by other community organizations. We did a get to know the Everett Waterfront recently and covered some of the port activity. So this is just a way for us to highlight more information about what the city's doing and hopefully catch new people. Um, we're going to be doing more through the Everett Channel to highlight city projects in a visual way. Um, PIPA has a lot of experience doing that, so you'll see more of that coming out. And then one thing that we're really excited about that we're going to be launching this fall is the Civics Academy. So you may have heard about these in other communities. They're sometimes called Local Government 101 um, or Get to Know Your Government. And so this is a chance for uh, community members to come in and essentially take a course in the city of Everett government, um, to get to know about our structure, our government structure, get to know about our key departments and facilities. Um, so it would be similar to the format of our CERT program, if you're familiar with that. Um, city staff will come in and be instructors, uh, give an overview of their department, take people on tours of facilities, um, let them see our equipment. And there's been very positive responses in other communities, so we're really excited about that. So stay tuned for details on that. And I will say on one of the things that we hope to do with that is we've met with different um, immigrant uh, community members in particular. They've told us that um, as they want to encourage their young people to get involved with city government, to look for jobs in city government, but they need to know more about um, how we operate and who we are. And particularly if they've come from a, a country where they have, or a, a place where they have a distrust of local government, it's really important for them to understand and put a face with um, what is essentially a large bureaucracy. Um, so we hope that that will be a chance to reach some of those groups. Finally, as I mentioned, employee development is a big thing for us. And this <clears throat> might seem like a, a weird thing for a group that's focused on public engagement to be concerned about. Um, but we know that in our little group of six, we talk about this stuff all the time. It's really important to us. Um, we care deeply about it. But it's not enough for our little group of six to care about it. Uh, we need to make sure that all 1,200 of our city employees know what the city expects in terms of community engagement and has the tools and resources they need to be able to do that effectively. So whether they're a parks uh, ranger talking with somebody in a park or a public works employee who's getting ready to launch a, a water improvement project, they need to know how the city expects them to do outreach, how to do that effectively and have the tools to do it. So our major priorities in this area are building awareness among our employees about what the city's doing and what our priorities are and then providing the tools and training for effective outreach and engagement. So one major tool that we launched last fall, and there's a screenshot in there because it's not accessible to the public, is our staff website. Um, this is a game changer for us. I just have to trust me when I tell you that what we had in, before this was really not very good. Um, so this, is a, this has made it much easier for us to share information with our employees. Um, to provide self-service opportunities, so to give them a, a how-to on how to get through a certain process, um, to let them find forms that they need on their own. So that's really been um, a, a huge deal for us, and we'll be using it a lot more as we go forward. Um, 
The second area, and this is a huge lift for us, but we think will be really important, is what we're calling public outreach toolkits, and particularly developing translation and interpretation resources, which candidly is not something that the city has done as consistently as we would like. Um, so that's a major focus for Wendy and Jamie. And, and this essentially would be a toolkit that our employees could use to, uh, if they were starting a project to do outreach. So just to give you an example, if a, if a pub the public works team was going to be doing a sewer improvement project in a specific neighborhood, our goal is that they'd be able to go to the staff website, they'd be able to see what languages were spoken in that neighborhood, um, they would be able to find who the neighborhood leaders are, who some of those non-geographic groups are and the contacts for them, they'd have an, uh, a clear understanding of how soon they need to do um, their outreach and in what form. Um, and they would have the translation and interpretation tools that they would need. It sounds pretty straightforward, but it's actually quite a lot of work to get all of that in place. So that's a major, major focus for us. And we're testing it out um, on some of the projects that we've been working on as a team to kind of figure out, you know, how to, what are the contract mm -hmm. issues as we, you know, are, are um, lining up translators and um, different interpretation services. So that'll be a big thing for us. Um, Again, most of these things are staff focused, but another one that we've launched is the community training calendar. So there are some great trainings being offered by some of our community partners, particularly around diversity and uh, community engagement. So we've created a special training calendar on our website to let our employees know about those opportunities, and we've subscribed all of our training coordinators to them so that uh, city staff are aware of some of the things that are taking place outside of um, city trainings. We also recently launched what we're calling a food for thought series for our employees. So every other Friday we do a free TED Talk viewing and we invite our employees to bring their lunches. And these are around topics like engaging, how to listen effectively, how to work with different um, populations. And then we do a facilitated discussion afterwards with our employees. What did you learn? How can you apply this? And um, we've had two so far and we've had really positive feedback so we're really excited about that. Uh, some of the other things that we do, we do a city weekly for our employees to let them know about what's going on, uh, major city projects, and, as well as a daily media, media summary which lets them know about where the city is um, showing up in the news and things that are happening in other communities that might um, affect us. And then finally, our team holds a monthly communications meeting with other city staff who have public outreach roles to make sure that they know about the latest things that we're working on, to get feedback on things like the Civics Academy, and um, to share information with each other about major city projects that are going on. So that's my main stuff. I know Thank I talked you. really quick, so Good hopefully job. you all caught that. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Um, or tap Wendy if Any quick could. questions before we divide into our groups here? Yeah, yeah, Brenda. How long have you been with the city? I have been with the city since August 2013. So almost four years. Mari? Uh, yes, I was wondering if you could uh, just give us maybe a couple of examples of, uh, under community engagement, you mentioned school partnerships as mm -hmm. one of your priorities. I'm wondering if you could tell us a little bit about how you see that developing and what kinds of things you'd, what, what your goals would be with uh, closer partnerships with the schools? Sure, so um, a couple of different things. Wendy and Jamie have already participated in some meetings where um, the school district has brought uh, school leaders, so principals, um, together with neighborhood leaders. And those have been some very productive conversations to share uh, common concerns, to share ideas, to work on some solutions together. So we hope to continue to build on those. Um, I know that our council members, you might be aware, our council members have recently started attending neighborhood meetings, so they've split up the neighborhoods among them. Um, and they are also going to be encouraging uh, school leaders to start attending the neighborhood meetings in their uh, given area. So that's another one. Um, but also just using each other's communications tools. So making sure that if we've got something that affects um, Everett families, for instance, we can, we can use the school's communications tools and vice versa. Just making sure that we're aware of what each other is doing. Sharita? Um, I just have two, two real quick ones. One, would marketing as the city be under the purview of what you guys do? So. Um, I, I, I want to say commercials, but for lack of a better word, but I mean, if it, like many cities nowadays are, 
are uh, marketing their cities for tourism. Is that something that would be able to purview? So a little bit. Um, so tourism is actually under our economic development director, and it's handled by our cultural arts manager. Um, but the tourism website and tourism social media is handled by Lexi, and she works for me. So she is um, giving voice and, and uh, doing posts that are reflect the direction of um, Carol Thomas, who's the cultural arts manager. So it used to be managed by an outside contractor, and it's now managed uh, by the economic development team. And then I just also just quickly wanted to ask about um, when we talk about multi or like immigrant communities and multicultural, are we making sure that, that's, that we're including language that's not just about immigrants and multiculturalism, but also those multicultural groups such as mine that are here it already that are people envision or believe that we're more, you know. Definitely, yes, connected. yeah. It, there is still some gap pieces in there, and so when we talk about multicultural it's not just immigrant. Definitely, yeah. Some of our more, more recent meetings have been specifically with immigrant groups, so that's probably what's top of mind, but for sure. Um, and I should mention that we're also working with other departments, like the police department, who um, that's a big topic for them as well. So as I said, sometimes our role is more of an a advisor in those or trying to connect the right people, but definitely all, um, all, all types of groups. <laughs> Thank you. Van? Um, mine is a comment. The, the, um, I want to thank uh, Wendy <laughs> and, and Megan and Pippa uh, because I had a, an opportunity three weeks ago to um, be a part of, it wasn't the neighborhood, but uh, an engagement where it was a race conference that the communities of color held and uh, the city of Everett was kind enough to tape our two keynote speakers. I'm waiting for the video, though, so that we can put it online on our website. But uh, I wanted to thank you and, and, and say that that's a wonderful thing that uh, the city of Everett is doing. Thank you. Yeah. Great. That's definitely Thanks. something we're trying to do more of. And Pipa has a boundless amount of energy, so I'll, I'm trying not to overwhelm her, but she will commit to everything. So, Maddie. Um, can you talk a little bit about how your priorities were established? I mean, because it does seem pretty internally focused. You know, like an outside, an outside, people in Seattle could probably care less about our streets initiative or about employee communication. And I mean, it does, it seems like we need, I mean, and maybe this is under um, Laney, but it does seem like we need more, you know, Everett's a great place to live and to play and to work. And to me, that seems like that would be under your department. But what you, so I mean, can you just talk a little bit about priorities and? Sure. Um, that the way the city is structured, um, we definitely support all of that in terms of um, showing, you know, promoting city events, promoting city parks programs. I'm not covering all of that today, but we definitely do all of that. Uh, but in terms of like marketing the city, that's more the way that it's structured right now. That's more under um, economic development and cultural arts. So we definitely work with them, but um, that would be more of a Laney Carroll. Yeah. Um. Mari, I'll come back to you, but Kelly? Um, I love the idea of the public outreach toolkits. Mm -hmm. Will they only be available for city employees, or could they also be used by other businesses? Um, I think in terms of the kind of the community networks and uh, the information sharing, I think we'd be happy to help share information about what other groups are doing, and that's something we do now. In terms of the translation resources and stuff like that, that would be um, geared towards city staff, but we'd be happy to, to share what we find as we develop it. Okay. Yeah. Mari. I'm wondering about Everett Channel projects. Um, well, I wish people was still here, but um, she, she has, as I said, it's really more of a matter of reining her in, um, but she is, is looking to do more, so PSAs around things that different departments are doing. Um, she was out this morning at uh, Lake Chaplin. Uh, we happened to have a, a media um, interview that was going on out there, so we sent her out to get some footage there. So we're really hoping to use her to, to show more of what the city does. Um, Everett Channel in the past was really focused on more of the in-studio stuff, and so we're trying to do, put more faces in front of the camera to show um, what, what our employees are actually doing out there. So 
Um, and then also using her to to do some of the some like the safe street stuff where it's um, for instance, we don't want to put somebody who's just recovered from a drug addiction in front of a forum, but we might be able to tell their story through, uh, through video. So some of that kind of stuff as well. How about availability for the community to, to use the channel for, obviously there would have to be, you know, guidelines and, and not, not, not anything goes, but as, as a tool for community groups, for different uh, civics groups or, or to, to work with her maybe or yeah with you. if you have some specific ideas let us know we are definitely open to doing that there are some constraints just because of well, the sure, way sure, that yeah. our channel is funded but um yeah. we do show some programming from other groups already so tulalip tribes um we do legislative updates during the legislative session um and as been mentioned we do we just most recently covered that conference so we do that from time to time but there are some kind of sure. restrictions sure. yeah and very, very quickly, this is the last one. Yes. How is the Civics Academy going to be advertised, promoted, so that as many people as possible know about it? And In all the ways, so as many people as possible. Uh, we'll be working, our, our goal is really to see some new faces in there. So um, we, while we love our neighborhood leaders, we'd like to see other people who maybe are not as familiar with city government. So we'll be working with some, we'll do some targeted outreach to some of those groups that we've identified and say, do you have people who would be willing to commit to this, however long it's gonna be and, and participate? Um, but we'll do it through social media. We, we have a ton of engagement on social media. Um, and then I, I expect that this will be something that traditional media will cover as well. Um, so all of, all of the tools we have, we'll use. Could you slip a little piece of paper in the water bill or the or something that literally everybody in the city gets we just do that, yeah we do that from time to time um th there are some again restrictions on that as well and some complications <laughs> there but um we'll definitely look at that yeah thank you you're welcome okay two more quick questions then we'll go into the groups michael and then sharita with all your efforts combined how many people do you estimate you're reaching i'm sure that's a hard number to pin down but best guess that is a hard one to pin down. Yeah. We would love, that's uh, something that we've talked about a lot. It's, it, uh, civic engagement can be a difficult one to measure, but one of the things that we're trying to do is just, um, this is not a full answer to your question, but when we have an event, we try to always yeah. have something that says, how did you hear about this? Um, we've tried to add that to everything so we, we can at least start getting a baseline of how people are hearing, how many people are participating in things so that we can measure going forward. But. Um, We've seen, you know, we've seen our audiences grow in all of our email updates on our, our Facebook, on Twitter. Um, our This is Everett, if you haven't gone to check that out yet, that's the tourism one. That one's already got a huge audience. So um, it's really building, but that is a difficult question. Yeah. Could you say less than 5,000, would you say? No, I would say more than that. More than that? Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, Sharita, final um, just, question. Just really quickly, um, I would utilize Pippa, and if you have ideas, she's very much open to hearing them. I've shared several with her, and she's just very excited to hear any ideas about, you know, if, that she can utilize to to accomplish the goal that she has. But then I also wanted to find out, do we in any way utilize the boards and commissions, especially like ours, to um, encourage more participation? I mean, I'm hoping that we're going to be surveyed out of this board or this commission so that you can find my networks to see who might I mean, I hope we're doing that through our boards and commissions yes. to get more yeah. leads as to where to look for outreach pieces. Definitely. And that's, those are the types of people that Wendy will be continuing to build to what is already a pretty good uh, da database that she has. But that's the biggest thing we find is that those existing networks and those existing connections that people have, we're never going to be able to connect with all of the people that each of you individually are connected with. But if we can build a relationship with you and you are willing to help us share information and give information back to us, that, that that equally important part, um, then then we're much stronger and much uh, able to reach a much much greater audience. Okay, time for groups. We need to do a little bit of adjusting because there are some folks who aren't here. Michael, you're the only one in group two. <laughs> so, <laughs> would you please join? Did Wendy was Wendy going to talk first? I'm sorry. No, Wendy's here to. Oh, they're going to. Wendy and Megan are going to wander and answer questions. So Michael, will you please go into Melinda's group? And um, uh, Angie was going to be the scribe for group number five, but she's not here. So Carissa, would you take over that role for your oh, group? Yes. Okay. For Angie? Yes. For Angie. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. 
Hands are here. Questions are similar to what we've had before. What are you hearing out of that presentation that you like and you think the city should continue? What additional ideas do you have? What are some aspirational goals, goals for civic engagement 20 years from now? And what are the recommendations you can agree on as a group? So. Chris's group has volunteered to be number one tonight, so we're going to let him do that. Well, okay. I can show you uh, artwork from when I was a kid, and it was supposed to be a Christmas tree, and it's this kind of ragged brown okay. blob, because I couldn't, I had to tear it out by hand. <laughs> okay, it's like an amazing All right, group number five, I guess you were. Yes. Go for it. That's Ben Cosa and... Do so, much <laughs> so I don't know what real order we're going in here. Are we starting with? It doesn't matter. You don't have to just okay, do whatever. Okay, so we kind of just went through the questions and sort of answered them. Um, under the first one, which was what what do we think we would like to see in civic? I think we start with number two. Okay. Um, greater promotion of city council meetings. Um, more public forums that are neighborhood centered um, at local schools. Um, so in that respect, more just ways for the community to get involved and have it be super localized. Uh, greater social media forums with moderation, of course. Um, volunteer visibility. So Chris was saying that like he volunteers, it would be kind of cool to be able to give him a bumper sticker or something, you know, even a, even a pen, even just something that says that they were a part of this and it's something they're proud of that they would like to display, you know. Um, also more leader recognition within the community. So kind of this along the same lines, but for the person who takes the charge um, because they're putting a lot of effort and time and energy in that is get, you know, can a lot of times not necessarily go unnoticed, but maybe just a more formal recognition. Um, and a highlight of community volunteer groups. So um, a place where, where people can go that shows everything the community is doing at any given time and just something really simple to use that, uh, that gets you excited. Um, so for our 20 year goal, it would be to be an inspirational city where one in five community members is involved in the community and a sense of community pride and belonging. So in the same respect that Seattle has their different districts um, and they're proud to be from those, those areas. Uh, it would be kind of cool to have not only be proud of, of living in Everett, but be proud of the part of Everett you live in. Um, and we can only really get that if you are involved and your, your neighbors are involved and uh, everyone takes charge. So our three big ideas were um, more public forums in neighborhoods and local schools, um, using social media to highlight neighborhood groups and volunteer opportunities, and a summer city pride day, so a day where everyone in the city can, can know it's happening, can be heavily marketed, where everyone comes out and cleans up. Um, whether it be taking down graffiti, painting, weeding, um, whatever needs to be done to help the city. But I think, I really feel like it's in everyone's, that volunteer heart is in a large majority of the people of the city. And even if it's one day a year, it's better than no days a year. <laughs> so, um, and then also to have a little kind of market side to that where there can be booths from the police department, from, um, from the garbage, like Rubatinos with how to recycle and you know, just different fun interactive booths. Did I cover it? Okay, do you want to add anything? Um, yes, sure. So when, when we were talking about being an inspirational city, it was the idea of in 20 years or so, people look back and say, you remember when 
and they would have their, you know, we didn't want to move to Everett because, and now it's, it's a place where also other cities look to and say, how did they get their community moving? You know, how did they get their, their streets so clean? How did they get this running so efficiently? So it's really, um, it's really like, and, um, you know, Shreda, you talk about looking at like Baltimore, and we were talking about looking at other cities for what they're doing. Well, why should we have to look to other cities? You know, why can't people start talking about, you know, what's Everett doing? How can we, how can we be like that? And, you know, we're a decent sized city, we're not too big, not too small. So I think it's a great opportunity for, um, to really aim for that goal. And I think this group has done a really good job in trying to identify ways to get there. I would love to see it in 20 years from now where, you know, because you talk about one in five community members, and right now you're looking at 20,000 people who would be involved in, you know, they don't all have to be on boards and commissions, but they could be involved in the conversations, they could be involved in city cleanup. So I think, I think, um, I think it would be a great way to go. So that suggests that you'd s set up some kind of a measurement system, because you'd have to to get there, you'd have to start tracking yeah, and be pretty clear on like how many really know yeah, who you're it, reaching and who are, who's involved. Because Michael asked that question and Megan said it was over 5,000, give or take, yeah. you know, something like that. So that's what, one in 20, a little bit less. Um, so some sort of measure, you know, or, or it could be something simple, it, however it wouldn't be done, but just to, just to know that like, we have a strong civic force here. And I was, so in terms of the city council meetings, because they seem to be pretty heavily advertised, just when I look on your web, the city's website. So what, in addition, what, what did that mean? I, I think it could be the, the city council meetings and all of these meetings, because you know, we have, there's a lot of empty seats there. Um, the diversity board, it's great. We have a lot of groups that come to those meetings, but not so many individual citizens. We were saying that even as, um just being a part of this group, we really recognize how much the city is doing that we never knew before. Mm -hmm. okay. It would be nice to right. know <laughs> before, you know, it would, it would be nice for people outside of this. Right. The forum. personal aspects need yeah. to be beyond, uh, you, you have to have other, everybody does not think in terms of going to the City of Everett's website. Right. Mm -hmm. So there should be something there's a lot of stuff that is displayed at uh, the post office, the grocery stores, things like that, places where people go to. I, I thought it was a great idea of someone talking about stuffing envelopes and bills. I, I, I know that we can't always do that, but that's, those are great things, especially if we had a Summer City Pride Day. That would be something to stuff in an envelope for a bill or something. So beyond just city council, more all the different groups that are meeting and events and just kind of greater promotion overall. Yeah, I think Everett's done a great job of reaching out to citizens and saying, come be a part of like this board, for example. But um, you know, I, these tend to be people who are kind of already of that mindset. So really looking for more ways to, to snag other people and get them involved. Okay, great, thanks. Who's next? Yeah. Okay, well, first of all, we do agree that Everett is already doing a great job for outreach. I mean, when we looked at our information that she presented, um, the sites and everything, it looks fantastic on paper. So the goal is what we were talking about, the plans are great, the outreach is great, and as the first group was sharing, it's the outreach is great. You know, the information is there. How do we get people to listen and attend meetings? How do we really make it personable? Because a lot of this stuff, like um, Brenda and the group was sharing, the key is how do we get people to do this? It's exciting to us, like Chris said, 
because we're already interested. But people that are not interested, how do we get them interested? <clears throat> so we talked about listening, attending meetings. You can click the updates, all the information they gave us. But how do we engage people prior to a major decision that needs to be made? And how do we incorporate them and collaborate with the people? And Brenda's going to share a little bit about that because she noticed that that's where our major concern is. I guess one thing that we've all kind of run meetings in our group. Um, Greg was in our group, and um, I forgot. And and Kika and um, anyway, um, our group was saying that we've all run meetings, and basically in our meetings, the attendance is always really high. If there's something that you want to help with, or something you're very upset about, and in the middle, it's just not the case. So we wanted to make that clear that um, for people to be involved is to create um, or communicate the helpful things, which I think kind of fits us, you know, which is what the other group Chris was saying, um, were like helpful. But then we have the angry people too and we need to incorporate and then keep them engaged. And um, that incorporates everyone's needs so that the angry people are angry, we have helpful people here and we just, you know, we connect in that way. So that's important. And then the national night out, which I remember kind of not really good, okay, but it used to be a big event. And um, that has been lost in the shuffle with the communication with the public. So we need to organize better as far as mapping our neighborhoods um, so that they know that it's safe to get together again. But what we ran into was the regulation. Um, we were talking about you have to have a food handlers, you have to do this, you have to do that. So if there is a better system to train people to put on the national night out, we can get our neighborhoods back. There's simple ways to do it and then obviously if you do a big event and you've done it before, maybe you've got that background experience to go ahead and uh, put on a great national night out but it's something that we feel we need again in the neighborhoods it was some people felt it was very successful and the others felt that it wasn't so successful because it started dying out because of the regulations so that's something we could look forward to hopefully in the future for our neighborhoods um Yes. Um, well, one thing before we go to technology is that we talked about part of the reason we feel that the national night out um, areas were dwindling is because they're separated in too many different places. So we did talk about unifying north, central, and south. And that way we can have the mayor and city council members there longer. Um, I remember seeing you guys at the evergreen one. Um, so. We want to continue to expand our relationships and engagement with the schools. And uh, again, um, if there's a project that people want to help with and we can motivate people to solve a problem by helping, we also want people who have problems to be an opportunity. That is our opportunity to engage these people and to move forward. Um, we also we want to have innovative, creative ideas like the Civics Academy, promote it heavily so we can have people understand and then get involved because they see how they fit in. And what they were talking about, every staff member knows how to plug you in. So if they do meet you, they know how and, and they instantly connect you. So that's where we come to technology and it's combined with our 20 year goal. Um, we want to reach people where they're at and a lot of people just don't have time even if they wanted to volunteer. So what they would do is they would have this technology that connects them with the municipality and they would click on what they want and then they would instantly be able to give feedback to our government. And what they would do is click on it and it would give our government and them instant results. Um, 2,500 people said yes, 8,000 said no. And that can motivate them if they want to change the opinion or change our government, they can run out and engage more people because they can see the difference they're making in their numbers and then we follow up with what action was taken based on their feedback. And this can give them results. I find that having engagement without results doesn't last that long. <laughs> so we want to have goals, 
attainable goals and communicate that we met those goals together. And if you lose, it's just like losing a soccer game. You may not always win. You might be on the 2,500 side, someone on the 8,000 side, but you at least know it was fair, the feedback was fair, and, and that's it. You just keep going, you have some kind of input to influence government change and stay active and engaged. And the last one, we actually answered, we want all these things to happen as best as possible. Our ideas and recommendations, it's a start, and we need to start somewhere. So that's what we have. Okay, very good, thank you. So in terms of the technology one, what you're saying is kind of build on what, what there is now and then stay abreast of new opportunities, all this emerging stuff that can help with polling and, yeah. yeah I think we talked about I think we talked about more of an interrelationship, an interdependence with government, as opposed to outreach and then input. You know, outreach, input, it would be more seamless okay. through, through a new technology. Great. Thank you. Okay. Margaret, one other thing our group talked about is the fact that when some of us thought that this department was what was in charge of tourism. Yeah. So we want to make sure that if we're going back to economic development that it gets added into that. Because it's not, it's, there's something that says expand the city's marketing program, but it does not specifically say about tourism. Oh, okay. Do you see what I'm saying? Like, I yeah. didn't notice that here because I thought we were going to be talking about it here. So we need to go back and okay. put that into the economic development. Thank you for oh, I thought it was in there. It just says expand marketing yeah. program, but it doesn't specifically say to tourism. To okay, yeah. good. Oh, we'll do it. Mm -hmm. Who's is this? Ethel. She's on her way. Oh. <laughs> I was on the same wavelength with you on marketing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. We have group number three. And I had the pleasure of working with Linda Warbonnet and Mar Mari, and also Michael. Okay, uh, as far as question number one goes, civic engagements, overall we are very pleased with what we're seeing in Everett. Uh, we'd like to see those some follow through with phone calls and emails. If you're gonna use the phone call system or email system and we call in something, we'd like to see follow through with that, more follow through to make sure it's effective and we are, our questions are being answered and our needs are being met in that deal. Um, we also want to see continued school partnerships. And we've started that and as Wendy was saying, we are meeting with the schools and uh, with the school districts and stuff for the schools and we have uh, goals set up already and we will be meeting again. Uh, Dr. Stewart's gonna organize another meeting with us to get together. But at our last meeting, we did have some very good things come out of that meeting and projects that we have that will be entered in, uh, introduced into our schools. It's, it's a great uh, group that's working together. They really are concerned about our kids and students in our schools and stuff like that. I mean, I have to tell you that Everett is doing a great job in working with your children. If you've got them there, you can go there and ask any questions you want. It's very effective. We want to see that partnership continue. We don't want to lose any of our kids. Uh, question two, one, what additional uh, in, um, initiatives? We want to see better communication between the schools, the police, <coughs> and our neighborhoods. We don't want that to be lost. We want, if something's going on in our neighborhoods, we want to know that we have an effective way of getting help. And we want to be working together. We don't want to work against each other. We want this group working together so we know that if something comes up, there's somebody out there who cares and we can reach out and we can get some help and we're going to resolve those issues. And it takes all of us working together. If we're going to put those things out there, we have no right to complain if we're not willing to be a part of the solution, okay? And then we want to expand city leadership from K through eight. And what happens there? They want, um, Mari mentioned that she'd like to see the kids in the schools know more about city government and county government and stuff like that at an early age so we know what's going on, how it works, and you know how it's gonna benefit them as they get later in school and in life. And who knows, they might wanna be city councilman one day. <laughs> And we want to continue to expand and our chances uh, for community groups to participate in the Everett Channel. 
uh, Mari said, you know, we've got that every channel out there. And what we'd like to do is that we'd like to see the citizens be more involved in that channel. And, you know, actually watching it and listening to what's going on and being attentive to it. Like, I think a lot of people flip through channels and they see that, ah, keep on going. We want to make it interesting enough where people stay and realize that we're going to get communication from this system that's going to be beneficial to us. 20-year aspirationals. Uh, we want to see very active neighborhood associations in every, every area of the city. And we talk about the council neighborhoods and stuff that we have. We have that involvement, and you mentioned the uh, crime, the night out for crime. It's very active. I can tell you about that. Uh, if you don't have one in your neighborhood, come out to South Ever to the Evergreen Public Library. We welcome you to come and work with us. We are working on it now, and it's going to be a great success as it was last year, and we, can, we feel like it will continue on that way. There's a lot of ways to be involved if you really, really want to be involved in stuff, okay? Um, greater cultural shifts of people being involved in the community. And uh, I'm going to let Michael explain that one to you. Yeah, that I, um, okay. Um, <laughs> that was just the idea of capitalizing on trends that perhaps, you know, because of national politics being somewhat crazy right now, people are um, uh, looking inward to their own community and, and seeing, uh, trying to understand how they can get involved. Um, I think that points to uh, the possibility for a cultural shift where one in five people is the norm uh, in terms of being involved in a city. Um, so I think, to, to put it practically, uh, one in five is, is kind of what we were thinking, too. Okay. And then we get down to our recommendations. Um, adopt a neighborhood, adopt a park, adopt a play, playground. And <laughs> these three right where we're talking about, you no know, people talk about things being wrong in their neighborhoods. My neighborhood's dirty, the streets are dirty, this. Why don't we pick up some of the junk? Why don't we organize and pick up some of the stuff? We talk about doing community outreach. So one way to do a community outreach is to reach your neighborhood and say, hey, this is bad here. Why don't we get together one Saturday and clean the neighborhood up? I heard you guys mention earlier in one of your conversations uh, about cleaning up things around and reaching out. Why don't we reach out as a city of neighborhoods to reach the entire city one Saturday or so? Churches are doing it. Why don't we combine our forces together and work together to build something that's effective and active? And we have one day, call it one day, and we reach out. If you've got a senior citizen and needs a yard cleaned up, here we are. If you've got a school that needs cleaning up, here we are. If you need the trail in your neighborhood cleaned up, here we are. And you know, if we decide to do that and we work together, I truly believe that if we were to go to our businesses and ask them to contribute supplies and stuff like that, I think they'll help us. They may not be able to give the manpower, but they can sure give the resources for us to do the work and we can get out there and put the manpower in and we can take pride in that and say, we did this. And we don't have to worry about having someone else do it for us all the time. We did it. It's ours. This is the pride of effort. We want it to stand, and it's the beginning of what is to come and what will be, and it's going to be a continued thing. We're not going to stop here. It's going to be an annual thing. It only takes one time to do it, and we're going to reach out and do that. You going to leave me? Oh, no. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Hallelujah, sister. You know, we don't ever want to forget that everybody doesn't do, use social media. There are people who are afraid of it. Let's find a way to communicate. Each one reach one. If you know something's going on in your community, tell your next door neighbor that your next door neighbor tells someone else. We can get the word out. Take a sign and post it on your mailbox. They post up signs about a lost dog and a lost cat. Let's put up some lost neighborhoods and work <laughs> together <laughs> and build a community. We want to see ever be successful. We can't sit here all this time and talk and not put some elbow grease behind the action. You know, talk is cheap. But man, if we walk it out in shoe leather, it's going to make a big, big difference in how we are effective in making changes in this city. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Ethel for City Council. Nice job. Thank you. Well, isn't there a mayor's race coming up? Yeah. You know, 
have to like keep trying to convince my wife that I should adopt an exotic dancer. It hasn't, it hasn't gone away. Yeah, so I, I wasn't walking out on you. So. I'll follow you, though. Don't they have to? Okay, I had Hugh, Roman, and Trita. Uh, Trita, I don't know if you want to come up with me. There might be a few that you want to explain. Sure. Which is perfectly. Uh, so, first of all, we, great presentation. We thought the scope of the presentation and the work that the communications department is doing is great. It's obviously a huge job, though. That's one of the things we wanted to acknowledge. Um, and uh, on the Civic Academy, I don't know if you want to talk about that, because I, I think it was one of the key things for you in terms of. Sure. We like the C Civic Academy idea. We are hoping to see that it's going to be a really robust and full sort of um, program that's really um, good at reaching out to the community. And I think somebody had mentioned not just reaching out, but getting back into. And so, but we just wanted to see that it's a really robust and um, thoughtful sort of program that's put together. Um, yeah, and that it encourages not just leadership, but, you know, I mean, there are different levels of participation. There's leadership and then there's, you know, the ditch diggers and that we have to look at how we can encourage all of those parts of that sort of piece to that. So actually, just like everybody else, schools came up uh, in our conversation, and Roman pointed out he thought the key, especially to the immigrant community, was working through the schools and, and making sure we had active uh, communication plans uh, to, back to the parents. And then next item there is get more grassroots. Uh, someone else said it earlier, the idea of uh, meeting people where they're at and trying to figure out you know, whether it's knocking on doors or getting that information out in a way that's uh, greater than just putting it on a website. More multilingual, uh, seeing that across the board, both from a transparency perspective, but trying to get people involved. Uh, get new ideas from the community. Uh, Hugh was, was big on that. I, I thought that was a really good point, the idea of continuing to look for, for new avenues, be innovative, and seek information, for, seek new ideas from the community members uh, in terms of what we can do better. I wanted to go back to the multicultural or the multilingual piece. There was quite a bit of discussion about what that looked like for our group. For some of us, it was the idea of including more languages, and for some, it was the idea that um, inclusion meant less, actually, I, you know, multilingual pieces added to the website or added to these pieces that they thought that it encouraged um, folks to embed and, and engage more um, in a way that was, um, I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> it wasn't, um, but it was just um, that more people would be involved if they were participating in a, like a single language, or in English, and, and that it was encouraging that piece. I, I, I hope I'm getting that it's, yeah. good, yeah. I mean, um, and then first, go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah I, I was the one who said, I mean, like, it's all good, the translation piece, but uh, as we mentioned, I mean, like, there are all kinds of people who came from different, I mean, like, countries, and let's say Norwegians, right, a long time ago, how much of translation they had. And they didn't have a lot of it, and that helped them to learn English. I mean, like, I'm a little bit, I mean, like, as I said, I have mixed feelings about it. I mean, like, it's good to have translation part, but I mean, like, it's not encouraging people to learn English. I mean, like, you know, there is enough of, like, speaking Ukrainian, Russian, and all those languages at home and in, the, in, in their own communities. So, I mean, I, as I said, I mean, I have mixed feelings. I mean, like, you know, I mean, like, so, I mean, like, English should be there, I mean, like, as, and, and so, yeah, th that turned out to that turned out to be a really big pro a conversation. Well, but again, I mean, like I've mentioned, the friend of mine who is who is a good friend of mine from the city where I came from, he said when he came here a long time ago, he intentionally he is Christian, he goes to church, but he intentionally went to American church instead of Slavic church so that he can learn English and uh, get in, get involved in where he lives. He's successful. He's engineer at Boeing, and two of his sons are. Everett police, I mean, like here in Everett. So, so, I mean, where, where to find that fine line, I mean, right. like, you know. And so, like we were saying just briefly, there's just a multi-level of what that can look like, because it could either look like adding more language and adding more languages to that, to the website and outreach pieces, and then there's the, the thought, a school of thought that it, it would be better to not, so, yeah. Next one, there's more fully integrated communi communications and marketing plan without Maddie's question was spot on earlier. Um, we think, you know, the communication part of it internally, we have to tell our story better, and I, I think the communications piece of that in terms of outreach and, and helping citizens do that is good, but also making sure that's really integrated with the marketing plan uh, from a city perspective. 
and then more citizen involvement opportunities and leadership. And actually, I'll turn that back over to you. Um, yeah, just more opportunities to recognize when people come to the office of neighborhoods or the the um, to your office and um, helping sort of guide their leadership, you know, desires to doing something in their community, i.e., when I came to your offices about um, building Broadway, um, having some sort of, you know, peace in place so that I would, it would not be a figure it out as you go kind of thing, but a, this is a plan that we've created and this is how you can get your community organization up and running and et cetera, et cetera. And then I wanted to go back to, sorry, <laughs> to the marketing piece. I think that you guys should be way more involved in that conversation. I think that um, it shouldn't just be in um, economic development and tourism, although those are huge pieces of that. I think that that is also a part that should be, you guys should be much more um, strongly involved in that conversation. Um, the pieces that you have, I think, that uh, would be well placed in that. So we uh, didn't get to number four. I'm not sure if it's because we didn't flip over the paper or we didn't get there, ran out of time. But uh, so you kind of count these as, as our big ideas also. Um, so we, we thought from a measurement standpoint, though, uh, the, the work in terms of the neighborhood groups, I think, is, is huge. And I think that's kind of our minimum standard in terms of our aspirational goal is making sure that we have neighborhood groups that are fully active and engaged uh, across the board. And then more multicultural participation. Uh, you know, how we measure that, I, I think, is probably <coughs> many ways that you can, but uh, more of that certainly needs to be our aspirational goal. Uh, steady growth and functional community or communication systems. This goes back to Hugh's point in terms of seeking new ideas and ways to reach out to people, um, making sure that that's uh, integrated and you see growth across the board for the, uh, the 20 years. And then a greater sense of unity and pride for the city, a sense of home. Uh, and Roman pointed this out, and I think this goes back a little bit to the marketing plan, too. We, we were talking a little bit about how discouraging it is sometimes when we tell people we chose to live in Everett, our business is here, and they're from Seattle, and they ask us why, because the perception that they have is so much different than what we know in terms of this community, right? And so working to change that over time is an important thing. Yes. So. And I, and I also, too, just want, I know that my guys don't like me to ad lib, but I'm just going to ad lib that I think that we should also honor and recognize people who do participate. We should do that more in our, um, yeah. the committees and boards of, with when we have people participating, that there should be opportunity to say thank you for being here, you know, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Talk about going for uh, Okay. Sharita, we got a free city of Everett tattoo for you. <laughs> right. So May 22nd, we're going to be looking for more than just an orca card as a thank you gift. That's what. That's the deal. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, I want to move on to the working draft and the process for kind of finishing up here. Mari, is your comment related to that? Because I, I we only have 15, 15 minutes, so I want to make sure we. To what Roman said, I just noticed in today's Herald, there's a front page story about, it's one of the schools, and I'm blanking out on which one it is, but it runs a, an English language learner program for the parents. And it's, a, it's the idea is to, it's to help parents start to work on their English so they can communicate better with the teachers. And, and, and it's, it's also partly education to resources in the community. Uh, English programs, other things. So maybe include that in there along the lines of what he okay. said, just to, that can be a piece of the partnership with right. schools is how the city can, can support that and just offer that as, as, a, as an additional resource. Thank you. Okay, so uh, let me just kind of lay out the process for, for finishing up here. Thanks you guys for coming. Um, since we do only have the one meeting left on May 22nd. So several people have given me edits on the working draft, which I really appreciate. Thank you, everyone, for that. I want you all to go in and look at, on one hub, there's a file called Committee Comments on Working Draft. And I want you all to look there and make sure that there's nothing that gives you absolute heartburn. When I look at it, it's, there are some very important edits and changes, all of which I'm committed to make, of course, 
but I don't see anything conflicting um, in, you know, there's a couple of things where I'm, I'm not quite sure what people mean, but I don't see any really conflicting edits, and I don't see major overhauls of any sections. But I want to make sure you all feel the same way. So if you'll go in like tomorrow or the next day and look at all the comments that have been made and make sure that there's nothing in there that you really disagree with. Because my um, tendency then is to make the edits in the various sections, and not all sections even have edits for them, and send them back to the people who made those suggestions just to make sure I'm on the money with what they've suggest to be changed, but only send the edits back to them and not send out all the documents again to all of you. Then in the next few days, like around Thursday or so, I want to have pretty much a finished Vision 2037 ready to send to Bob. And I send that to Bob, and then Bob has this, as I mentioned in an email, a great graphic designer who's ready to to take this thing and create then a final graphically designed documents, document with photos and you know nicely laid out and all that stuff. And then we would get that out to you around hopefully the 19th or so of May. So then you would have a few days before our May 22nd meeting, but then on May 22nd what we're really doing is looking at essentially a final document together and making any suggestions that you want to make at that point or changes, things you might want to tweak. So is it going to be one document? I'm it's going to be good. one document at that so point, yeah. I'm we'll meld, I know, we'll meld all those sections. Because I think so that's how we should find, also if we're missing something like this tourism thing. Yeah. yeah. For mm -hmm. me, I have to, in my brain, if it's all in one, it's easier for me to yeah. see what's missing. Yeah, I think so. Missing and then duplications. Yeah. And I've tried really hard to, to in, the, in this working draft, to especially where, you know, stuff was um, dupl duplicative in the various sections and to try to Ill eliminate that, but you guys will see more in others. And so um, we'll do that together on the 22nd and then probably have a few days after that if there are any remaining ideas or things that you think of that you want to submit in terms of edits. But that's kind of the process going forward. Do you want to talk about the design or anything? Or Okay, all right. Does that make sense to folks does that okay now so then let's say anybody have any comments on the working draft that you want me to know about tonight and this tourism one well, that was a good catch so i'm glad i'll make sure i get that in that section sharita one of the things that we chatted about earlier um and i wanted to it was uh, to maddie's point of not being able to like truly read through it all with it being split up but when I was trying to do that today by section, I recognized that there wasn't a lot of language about um, embracing multiculturalism or inclusion um, in a way that was um, that talked about actively doing that. And I could I won't say that I didn't miss it. I'm just saying that I wasn't noticing that it was in there talking about ways in which we can promote you know the city as a as a multicultural city. We talk about you know there's a lot of conversation right now in the city about it being. Um, a safe city and all of these things and a multicultural city and we're recognizing all of the new faces based I mean even just based on this committee here that there should be more language about we talked about I, we talked about having a festival that was more multicultural based throughout you know something that was similar to the Nubian Jam but was more inclusive of all sorts of different groups as opposed to the folk life which is an arts and cultural piece it's not a multicultural piece and so I hope that people are um, intentionally looking at the document and looking for that sort of language so that we can include it to make sure that we're reflecting that Everett is a multicultural city and that that we and if it's not that we want it to be it should be it's I mean that's why I'm here is that's why we're you know we're all here is to see those pieces flourish in this document and so I hope if, if you could keep an eye out for those pieces that would be great I think so and I'll just, also do some double checking on that as I go yeah. through this next iteration Brenda? Just to add quickly that when we think about multiculturalism, it's po cult poverty culture as well in our city and make sure that we're representing those people who are, you know, dealing with poverty and including them, making sure our programs are engaging them as well. Okay. Greg? In our group, we discussed uh, <clears throat> the National Night Out, and I spoke from my experience having organized them before, and I complained about 
needing uh, a food handler's card, needing parks and recreation involved and permits, uh, having uh, permits from, for food handlers, getting porta potties, getting donations from supermarkets, and on and on and on. And we did have a total of 20 volunteers and one, uh, one organizer that had such a monumental task, mm -hmm. it was difficult to pass that knowledge on to someone else who was going to take the responsibility, and we were all volunteers. And we were done writing that all down, and then Wendy McClure comes into our group and starts talking, and at the very end I said, she kind of batted back and forth, but at the very end I said, how are they going, by the way? And she said, well, nobody puts on those great big ones anymore, like, like we did. They all put little ones together. Mm -hmm. And that way, where our, we had one great big one, we should have had four smaller ones. Because we lost our way. We lost our way. We didn't do anything to bring our neighborhoods together. And the object of the game was National Night Out Against Crime. And the object of the game was to get to know your neighbor, map your neighborhood. Hello, my name's Greg. I live here. That never happened. Looking back, it's because it was too damn big. So I guess they're working now, but I think there should be some more emphasis in that. City should get more involved for those hurdles that we had to jump over that, that the learning curve is too high to pass that baton. We haven't had a, a national line out in Delta neighborhoods since we quit, since I quit and, and, and uh, the other woman, Terry. Quit because it was such a monumental task. So okay, good. Other thoughts, Maddie. I don't mean to be beating this tourism thing to death, but um, <laughs> but I think it's it's actually a little bit different. It's not only tourism. It's kind of like Chris was saying. It's like an image thing. And I mean, so I mean, tourism to me is like come visit our city, but it's also like getting our city to realize that we're a great. I mean, I think you know, I was here when we used to have the mills, and it used to be really smelly, and everyone in the whole you know, oh, you live in that smelly place. <laughs> but I mean, I, I mean, I think we. It's not. It's more. It's more than just tourism too. It's just like an image. It's a like, re-imaging of the city. Yes, we need to I mean, re-image our city. I mean, Everett Absolutely. is way different Absolutely. now, and it's cool. We got really cool things going on. Yeah. And we need you know, to highlight um, that. Yeah, not just for ourselves, but for the world around us. You guys that. may have noticed. Um, so we do have quite a bit in there about marketing Everett and all. So pay attention to that. But. What I did when I did your, um, the introduction to the document was I said, you know, there are three major themes that run through every set of recommendations. And one is greater inclusion, you know, really changing the, the way that, one, the first one was the city's doing a lot of things well and we want to continue with that. So it wasn't wholesale, change everything the city was doing. The second one was it's time for greater inclusion in the city. and a, a, I don't think I use the word multicultural, yeah. I may have, but you know, just that sense of let's turn that page and really, because that's the reality of what's here. And the third one was, it's time to tell a new story. Yes. yes. It's yeah. time to tell a new story about Everett. And it doesn't matter what economic development, education, you know, parks and rec, wherever you are, you guys have come up with that idea. It's time to tell a new story. So I said, those are the three things that no matter what section of this document you're reading, you're going to see that theme. Good. So, and then I'll go back and do the tourism thing. But it's been remarkably consistent, those, those three, three items. So they're in there. Okay. Yeah. Anything else on the working draft that you want to process? I was wondering why the police department and the fire department were never involved in any of our yeah. discussions at all. <laughs> well, uh, I'm, I'm not sure how you where you'd fit the fire department in, but same place as park and recreation. Well, I, it was limited time, you know, <laughs> limited. I mean, we didn't want to keep you guys here for the whole year, so that I think I mean that's part of fire. Police, I think, you know, we we had Hill Kamen here, who is now our director of public health and safety. And that was kind of the idea there was, was to try to focus in on a narrower aspect of how we're in a new way trying to deal with public safety. I mean, in any of these things, I think we could have probably gone into more depth, but we just made some choices based on how much time we had. 
So if there are innovative ideas about the police piece, though, or the public crime and public safety, though, those are still, those are okay to uh, yep. forward to you and then yep. figuring out. So you could forward stuff to me in the next, like I said, by about <laughs> Wednesday at 5, though, I want to have something that I can turn over to Bob for this next um, for the design. We're down version. to crunch time now. Yeah, yeah. now. Yeah. And, um, and I'm also going to ask you to be faster on the not as much turnaround time for the civic engagement rough draft because we'll need to, I want to get that churned out so we can get that included in the document. So, but, but nothing's being finalized yet. You know, you'll still have a good hard look at that final everything together document and we'll still have a good discussion about that at our last meeting. Okay, inspiration in the last two weeks. What did you guys see other than beautiful sunshine and mountains and reminder of how beautiful your city is? Anything else that... Remember, this could spawn a good marketing slogan. I saw a bunch of gray whales blowing out the, in the sound with a bunch of kite boarders oh, by them oh, and a whale gosh. watching thing. Oh, oh that is definitely cool. marketing. Beautiful. <laughs> I, I, was, I was telling this to Bob earlier. I, I went to uh, Ben this past uh, week, last week, and uh, it was a great place to visit. I, I want to tell you it was a great place to visit, but you know what? I really like to come back and live here. I, ben has got 80,000 people in it. Um, great place to visit. This is a great place to live. This really is. I've lived a lot of places. Great, great place to visit, great place to live. <laughs> Love it. I think you just wrote it. Good. That's, Good. That's it. Um, I, if any of you like to listen to podcasts, um, the Live in Everett website, they're now doing a podcast and they're interviewing people from the city. They interviewed the gal who, do, who does uh, Sunken Ship Tattoos and the guy who owns Narrative Coffee and then one of our local bands. Uh, the Tellers. Tellers? No, <laughs> I should know it. She's my friend. Mary Adams, Mary and Martin Adams. Anyway, you know, they're talking about a lot of the same things that we're saying in here about how great the city is and how people don't know it. And um, anyway, th it's a great listen. What's the name of the podcast? Live in Everett. Live in Everett. Yes. Great. All right. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy the weather. We'll see you in two weeks.